the Cambria South London. How the hell are you guys feeling? Welcome to the Hospital Podcast. This is the 500th episode of the Hospital Podcast. And uh, I'm just going to introduce my guest on the right-hand side, the co-founder of Hospital Records. Can we just clap your hands and make some noise for Mr. Chris Goss? Unfortunately, the other co-founder couldn't be here today. And you know what? We have a little message from Tony Coleman, if you guys want to hear it really quickly. Is that all right? Hello. Hello. Hello, this is London Electricity beaming into Hospital Podcast episode 500. I'm very sorry that I cannot be there, but I'm watching my youngest son play trumpet at school right now. Wow, episode 500, eh? It has been a journey. The first episode was recorded in 2006, and I have got so many happy memories doing this podcast. I'm trying to think of my favourite episode. It's potentially the one where someone sent in a shout about them kicking a seagull off a roof. So uh, I'm going to leave it there. But Andy, Degs, cannot wait to go to America with you in a few weeks. It's going to be fantastic. Kicking off in Tulum, Mexico, then working our way up the West Coast. Yeah, man, it's going to be real fun. So listen, huge love to everyone who's been involved and interacted with the podcast over the years. I have enjoyed reading out your shouts so much. Most of them didn't enjoy some of them. But um, yeah, you know, I'm just sending my love and uh, have a great podcast. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Tony. <laughs> Mr. Goss, let me invite you to the stage. 500 podcasts. So we started, I say we, I, was, I wasn't a part of it. How old were you there. then? I mean... You were about 12 then, wasn't I was you? about 12. Well, how was I in Although that? you were about 12 then, probably. I was, yeah, 12, okay. obviously. Yeah. Um, I think that was 2006 was the very first podcast. Yes, indeed. Do you remember the settings where the very first podcast was? Where did you do it? Was it in the Purple Gates? It was in the Purple Gates, yeah. Which because, was in Forest Hill? Yeah, uh, because we had a guy working for us called Matt Riley, who is now the Senior Vice President of AWOL. Shouts to Matt. Uh, and uh, yeah, he said that we should do something called a podcast. And me and Tony was like, uh, what's a podcast? So that was 2006. Was, was a podcast not really a thing back then? I d we had no idea what it was. So we had, he had right. to explain it to us. You sound like my dad right now, man. <laughs> All right. Easy on, easy on the age jokes. Fine. Uh, so we had to Sorry. have it explained to us. And they're like, oh, it's like a radio show, but for Apple. And um, so Tony was like, I'll do that. And he did. And it sort of carried on. So nearly 20 years later, you decided to put me in charge. Why? <laughs> <Who's that? laughs> Why? I, I think that was George. Why did he do that? <laughs> I think it was George's idea, really. Oh, was it George's have a idea? shout for George. Big shout out to George. And a shout for Chimmer. George, George always says, yeah, no, it's fine. We've got loads of time. And then, you know, at sort of 25 past seven, he's like, oh, I just need one more cable. He's been back and forth to the office three times this evening. <laughs> Much respect for the team that actually put it together. No, honestly, George and Chimmer. And also, can we give a massive shout out to Chimmer as well? I know she's hiding away. Can we bring a shout out? <laughs> so I've... Um you know, I've been doing the podcast now for over a year and uh, honestly, if it wasn't for those two, there's, there's no way we could make any of this happen because do I look like the kind of person that knows what he's doing? <laughs> we'll just not answer that for now. I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to go on and play some kind of hospital slash med school classics over the next kind of 25, 30 minutes before we have a couple of very, very special guests. Um, we won't announce them quite yet, but they are very, very special. So the first tune that I'm going to play is a track by an artist who you may have heard of called Etherwood. And this track is called Lighthouse. It's of his last album on Hospital featuring Zara Kershaw. So I think we'll just uh, start playing this tune. And then I want to ask you, Chris, the relationship with Mr. Etherwood himself. How did that start? What year did it start? Tell me the date. Tell me the time. It was, about, it was about 1937 when Jesus we first Christ. met him. So um, this is pre-World War II. To be fair, the thing is, he had really short. I'm not joking. Like he I had joined short the hair. The time. He had very short hair and like a fade as well. But um, Tony likes to take credit for finding him and signing him. Uh, we, we did that quite a lot actually. But um, yeah, we found him through uh, Jack Wob. Anyone remember Jack Wob? And uh, also MC Rec, who's now a big time manager. But we're very grateful because what an outstanding artist, Mr. Etherwood. Fantastic. So, party people, welcome to the first tune of the podcast. This is Etherwood Lighthouse, Zara Kershaw!
up Danny Bird on the phone, right? <laughs> um, could someone let Danny Bird in? He says he's outside. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> Did Danny Bird ever turn up late for one of his Is sets? Danny Bird outside? Yeah. Can we give a massive shout out when he comes in? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to pull this back actually because this is ridiculous. Where is he? Where's Danny Bird, man? <laughs> it, what? Is he double parked? <laughs> Has he's he already sh- he's shocking at parking, honestly? Has he already got himself a fine? I take it. Is he comes? All right, let's make some noise for Danny. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I think it's obviously it would make absolute sense to play this tune. Danny, you've completely changed the running order of the podcast. You... Where's my drink? Danny just asked, where's my drink? Can someone get this manager? But he's, he's driving. Don't buy him. A, it's got to be a juice. Just a juice. He's already got himself in trouble with the parking attendant. So anyway. <laughs> so we're going to go back through the vaults. It's not through the vault. It's not that old, this tune, is it, Danny? I'm just going to back. Well, which one? We're going to play Ill Behaviour. Is that, is that okay with you? <laughs> Don't worry. We won't, we won't ask you to come up on the mic, my friend. It'll be good. Can I just say, this is proudly Hospital's only ever top 40 hit. Back once again. All right, let's double it, right? George, we have some volume in here or what, man? Should we do this? (laughs) Why did this go? an absolute classic on hospital records this track london electricity just one second and this is the apex remix who knows this one who knows i tell you what we haven't got enough time to talk about it yet should we just let it drop for a little bit and we can let it drop is that all right okay all right then welcome to the podcast how's it gone you can sing if you want And this is a legitimate hospital classic, right? If you agree, make some noise right now for London Electricity!
Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about this tune. So the original, just one second. Do you remember what year it came out? No, not at no, all. No, you don't. You do you remember who it was by? Um, <laughs> it's the geezer with the glasses, I think. What's his name? It's Tony Cole. Anthony. Anthony. Yes. Roderick. Roderick. Was yes. That, his, that was his middle I name. I couldn't possibly comment. No. No, I like it. Anyway, isn't, yes, that guy. Yes. Isn't that Roderick guy. the guy from Blackadder? Uh, from only from only Fools and Horses. Is that, actually. Is that right? Am I right? I don't remember, but so uh, no, that's Baldrick, not oh, Roderick. That's Baldrick. <laughs> Showing your age, Andy, honestly, jeez. <laughs> hey, listen, bro, I'm 30. Some of us know, some of us know. Okay, fine. Hey, listen, I'm 35 now, man. I'm joining you. I'm catching up with you, you know. I'm catching up with you. One day I'll be there. Yes, no, but on a serious note, so this is the Apex remix. And of course, Apex is not with us anymore. No. Nope. I know that Tony. Rest in peace, Rob. And may he rest in peace to Rob. And I know he had a fantastic relationship with Tony. Do you remember how this tune came about, the original, and how it was remixed, because I remember when I first signed to hospital in 2018, and I was playing a lot of shows with Tony, this was probably the tune that was played the most in all of his sets. And it was, yeah. and it was incredible what it used to do to the dance. So do you, want, do you have any background story that you can give us? You can say no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you know, as, as some of you know, Tony is like one of the original songwriters in drum and bass. Like he and I come from like the old days of like concept albums and prog rock. So he knows about writing songs. It's also down to Elsa, um, who's an incredible lyricist. Shout and to Elsa. you know, like from, you know, from that big record that he made, that whole album, this was like one of the highlights. But then Rob came in and turned it upside down and made it just a big dance floor moment. So um, God love him. Perfect time for the second drop. From one hospital classic to another. Just put your hand up in the sky if you know this tune. If you know. I think that's a resounding yes. <laughs> I will just say, I think this is one of my favorite tunes that we've ever released. You think so? So if I was going to say in the top five? 100%. In the top three? Absolutely. Wow. I think the question next is like, what's number one? And was it Perveglia by this guy called Dex? <laughs> no, honestly, I don't trust Dex, man. <laughs>
think my daughter just walked in. Which one? Right, I think it's time for an absolute classic once again. I know you guys are going to recognize this, right? Twenty year anniversary. just mentioned this is 20 years old so this is older than me no no I, I mean wish. I wish I wish Andy yeah uh, so uh, can we just have some noise for Matt Logistics please so this this incredible tune was on an EP called the future sound of Cambridge come out in 2004 2004 and uh, just so you know uh, we signed a guy called Newtone his older brother about 100 years before that and then Matt came down and he came down with a CDR and it had 11 tracks on it and we looked through it and the very last track in Biro just said together and we're like yeah that's going to be track 11 it's going to be crap isn't it and uh, me and Tony were like oh bloody hell this is a bit good isn't it and uh, you know we let some other labels have the other tunes and we were like can we have that one and we put it on something called The Future Sound of Cambridge and it's one of the biggest tunes in drum and bass. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> now, I know you earlier you were talking about, you know, kind of like top, f well, I was putting you on the spot and saying top five releases of all time. I mean, from my perspective, I genuinely think this is one of the best drum and bass tunes that's ever been written in any subgenre by any producer. And so talking a little bit more about logistics, you've mentioned to me in the past that he's probably one of your more prolific producers when the it comes most. I mean the guy has released how many albums now so I think he's done seven albums but whenever you do an album with Matt Logistics he's I've only done one <laughs> like he he starts off and he's like I've got a few demos and like he sends you a Dropbox link and there's like 60 tunes and then he's like it's all right I'll make some more and you go no don't make any more I don't even know how to listen to that lot so he's he's absolutely unbelievable he's like a machine and it's all he does and when he came to us he was, he was at Graphic Design College. He gave us that CDR and he dropped out after 12 months and he went, do you know what? Actually, drum and bass is much more fun than graphic design. <laughs> and uh, God love him. He had a full-time career and all he does is make music full-time and I love him to pieces. Yeah, he's a great guy. And one more time, let's make some noise for logistics, please. <laughs> all right. The gentleman at the back knows this tune, right? <laughs> and this absolutely amazing from New Logic, remix of Birdie Wings. Damn, I sound like a radio DJ. You could do this professionally, honestly. I mean, yeah.
So this track, Camo and Crooked Climax. Now I have to be honest, obviously Together is one of my favorite drum and bass tunes of all time. But what actually made me a proper fan of Hospital Records would probably be Camo and Crooked. And this track, Climax, I remember everyone from Andy C to Hype, Liquid, Jungle, everyone was playing this tune. I mean, this has got to be up there, surely, for, in terms of hospital records as a discography. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I like a lot of Camo and Cricket records. It might not be my favourite one. Oh, um, really? Another, an, another, oh, little, another little behind the curtain <laughs> moment. The great thing about Camo and Cricket was they came to see us and they were like, yes, hello. Um, so we like you and we like Ram. Hang on, and, let's uh, stop the tune. What was that? Yes, hello. I mean, look, people have, people have like, made an effort to come to the pub on a Monday, so I'm going to give you all the exclusives. So basically, they were sat on our sofa, Danny remembers, and like, they were like, well, do we go with Ram? Do we go with Hospital? And we're like, well, uh, I don't know. Uh, we, you know. We've got a cheap blue Ikea sofa. And then they said to us, um, but so we're going to DJ, and we're going to DJ separately, because this way we make a lot more money. And I was like, that's a really shit idea. Um, <laughs> because I think it's a bit cheap. So I think you should DJ together. And if you do, I think that really things will happen for you. And do you not think that the greatest D&B DJ duo that you've ever seen? Yeah, they've got to be up there, man. They so like, be sometimes, you know, you like go a slightly longer way around to get there, but they are honestly some of the greatest writers, producers, DJs that we've ever worked with, and I love them very much. Absolutely. Honestly, absolute legends of Hospital Records. This is Camo, Crooked, Climax. At least this is one of my favorites, right? <laughs> Once again, who knows this one? Anyone? Yeah, yeah, woo! Just checking. <laughs>
So talking about Mr. Nets guy himself, probably one of the most trailblazing artists to ever sign to Hospital Records. Boris's first album was absolutely incredible. How did the working relationship come about between Hospital and Netsky? So I guess, you know, he used to look like Justin Bieber. Uh, I promise you he did. He had that, uh, you know, that whole thing. I swear you're I calling tra- everyone out today, I'm man. still trying <laughs> to do it now myself, actually. Um, but he, he sent us a couple of, do you know what? He sent us a few demos and, and, to- and Tony said, yeah, I don't know, mate. I think he might, I think he might just like take over lo- like logistics, his space in the, in the roster. I, I'm not really happy about that. So let's just leave it. And we said to him, look, if we buy you a Eurostar ticket and you, do you want to come to the office and have a chat? And he went, yes, please. And he, we, so he came on the Eurostar and he sat in the office and he said nothing. And he just sat by my desk and we were like, we were just, you know, listening to records and like talking bollocks and, you know, and he just sat there saying nothing. And uh, we, we went to the studio and we played a few demos and we we're like, you're quite good, mate, aren't you? He's like, oh, thanks very much. And uh, we said, like, would you, um, would you like a record deal to sign hospital? And he said, that would be my dream. <laughs> and we were like, cool, okay, let's do that. And, uh, and amazingly, he then signed a record deal. And he is one of the most special artists that we've ever worked with. He's one of the fucking nicest guys in this business. Like, Shouts to Boris, man. Let's make some noise for you know, Boris, next guy, come on. One of the... One of the good things about, you know, you know it's a good artist signing when people come into the dressing room and he's actually pouring drinks for everyone saying, how are you? Are you having a good time? Are you all right? Even when he's smashing stadium shows, that's still his attitude, right? And it's all about being nice and being welcoming and being warm and being part of a community. And he's still doing that and we love him and he's been a massive part of the rise of the label. And he's probably made some of the most classic tunes that are identifiable as hospital records. And to be honest... A few of them, yeah. A few of them, right. Yeah. Memory Lane was going to be the other one that I was going to play. But actually, I thought I'd just stick with this. So this is obviously Tomorrow, Another Day, VIP. Taking off, taken off Andy C's Nightlife so compilation. So I knew you'd get a little bit triggered about that. So... You we didn't just, have the original, Should we just, just have an argument like, no, on like, screen? Come on, Should man. have an argument on screen? So basically, I would have played... Couldn't it. you have dug a little bit deeper for it? No, I was going to oh, dig deeper, fine. but I thought, oh, I like this version. No, it's fine. It's so fine. why didn't you sign this version then? I thought I did sign that version. No, you didn't. Andy C did. I also, I have to... I also realised that at my age, I'm sometimes like, I really like this tune. We should put it out. And someone's like, yeah, Chris, you released that seven years ago. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> anyway, let's go. If you, so, wanna, if you wanna play Andy C compilations all night, that's fine. Okay. I mean, I could. Um, no, no. <laughs> Listen, Nightlife 4 was fucking amazing, bro. That's all I can say. Nightlife 4 is incredible. Okay, so basically, I know we started a little bit late today, and um, we've got a label manager is here somewhere. If I don't play this tune, he'll probably go a He's little there. bit Harry's crazy. there. Where is Harry? We have some Harry? noise for Harry, hospital's Harry, label manager. Label manager. And he said to me earlier, make sure that you play the tune that comes out on the 7th of March. So there is another gentleman behind him called Harry Hoax. Can we make some noise for Hoax, please? So this dude is, um, how old are you again? 23? 23. A lot younger than me, basically. Chris, I think you've insulted enough people tonight. (laughs) That's the only reason you asked me to be part of this. Oh, of course it is. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, am I the good cop, you're the bad cop? Is that how it works? No, I'm just like, the old yeah. cop. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that, to be fair. But Harry and myself, have, uh, I made a shoe called Outlaw. You might have seen it on my socials. It's coming out on Thursday this week. I thought we would just play this on the podcast. If that's okay with you, with you guys. And uh, yes, Harry, do you want to maybe come and step up and answer Harry, a few questions, Mr. Hoax? Come on in, Harry! Come on in, Harry! Make some noise! Mind the cables, Harry. Mind the cables, mate. I'm an outlaw, but I'm certain. Calling out to them renegades when the night comes, we out working. Whole squadron, we ain't playing games. Go hit the club and start murking. No family will get left behind, so when they hear the sound, it's curtains. I'm an outlaw, but I'm scheming. Calling out to them hooligans when the night comes, we're not dreaming. Whole squadron, we ain't playing games. Go hit the club and start murking. No family will get left behind, so when they hear the sound, it's curtains. to the P. 
people never see the truth Divide and conquer, fuck the government, they lie to you Shout to the bandits, not conforming to the status quo You work and pay your taxes till the stress of life will take its toll Yeah, join us and come beat them Unify for that freedom, no more waiting out for the weekend So many people feel lost, all that Netflix and that tweeting A revolution of intellect, see the bullshit in their dealings I'm an outlaw and I'm certain comes without working whole squadron we ain't playing games hit the so game. i want to welcome this individual to the pub right now and you know what i love doing a hospital pub cu- pub cast podcast pub cast and this is the 500th episode and so i actually don't know how, i'm trying to remember how i discovered your music i think it was and i don't know how many people have heard of this gentleman before and he had a track called crowd control which was doing absolute bits in the scene i can see there's another harry in the background who knows about this tune right <laughs> Um, and I actually remember when I first heard this tune, not only was it straight on my stick as an MP3 and I was doubling it all over the place, it's probably one of the most amazing DJ tools that is out there. Um, but then we jumped in the studio together, I think probably for the first time a couple of months ago, maybe it was at the back end of 2023. And yeah. I was expecting us to make actually something a bit more like this, but we ended up making something different. So you as a, as a producer, you're known more for kind of like the crunchy, crunchy kind of style of the crunch what is a, what kind of artists influence you with your sound and your kind of approach to making drama based music i mean i've always looked up to like ti and dlr that kind of Woo! crunchy bristol sound system music you know proper tight mix down stuff um but yeah i've been branching out to a lot more kind of liquid soulful stuff since working with you um it's got nothing to do with me <laughs> Well, You're doing this on your own, Rude Boy, I tell you that. No, honestly, I mean, so we're going to play um, a piece of music that you and I have written together recently. And you mentioned that maybe the liquid side is, is not something that you've been known for that much up until this point. Is that part of your repertoire that you want to be known for a little bit more moving forward? For sure, yeah, yeah. I'd love to be known to do a bit of everything, if I can, you know. But, you know, yeah, I just want fingers in as many pies as possible really you know wow but fingers I love in as many pies i love that <laughs> i love it all though i love all the all the all the subgenres so you know someone out there just said that's what she said and i, I don't know why i repeat that. <laughs> he had that to go me. there it didn't he me. <laughs> so we made a tune called ghosts it was originally um and i don't know if anyone that has listened to the podcast before has probably heard this tune uh, being played. Um, so do you want to just, so I don't explain everything as I always do, right, Chris? Do you want to explain how this tune came about? This tune, it started out, um, so you sent me the vocals because they were originally meant for another tune with a producer called Wings, um, who is a great producer. Shout out Wings. Shout out Wings. Overview. Um, but the, the tune you guys worked on, it just, there was a slight clash of styles. It just, for some reason or another, it just wasn't working out because, yeah. But then you sent me the vocals and we took it in a completely different direction. And I think I'm biased, but in my opinion, I think it, it's what it needed as the vocal. It needed to be a bit more melodic and soulful. So we took it down that route. So, yeah, I mean, should we just play it? Should we play it? Should we play this tune or not? Yeah. yeah. All right. Cause I'm lost Hamstrung by the things that people say I'm so young and dumb with no way to get off this train Awake all night I contemplate my fate How many people suffer in this way It haunts me every waking day Is there light in the world? Cause it's only in the darkness I relay The ghost that haunts me every single day Every time he moves, we just clap, right? Feeling like the pressure's inside Even though I've gone back in time 
Okay, we can't give it away too much, but that is a new piece of music from myself and Harry Hoax. Now, whilst I have this esteemed gentleman up with us at the hospital podcast, or the pubcast, sorry, I do keep forgetting, right? Because we're at a flipping boozer all getting drunk, which is what I love to do. Harry, you're going to play something, and you've collabed with someone in the crowd. And I don't know where he is. I can see him. He's got longer hair than me, and that's always a bad sign. Um, but his name is Cosmo. Can we give a massive shout out to Cosmo? Yes. So quickly, before you play this, just kind of, again, tell the people how this tune came about. So this tune, uh, so Cosmo is a good friend of mine now, and we've, uh, we've been doing some one-to-one tutorials. Cosmo's there with the hospital hat on, the uh, unreleased <laughs> hospital cap. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so we were working on just doing some one-to-ones and he came to me with this tune asking for some help on it. Um, and I just really liked it. And I was like, well, we ended up doing so much on it. He was like, should we just call it a collab? And I was like, absolutely, because it's, it's a stinker. So let's, let's do it. So yeah, this is me, Cosmo, and Subscript, who is also another, we're all from Bristol. Great. Uh, is another Bristol-based producer. So this is me, Cosmo, and Subscript as yet untitled. Um, All right, this one's for the Bristol gang right yeah. now. Let's go. It's a bit darker, this one. Mr. Chris Goss, you have a microphone, right? <laughs> so, firstly, can we just do me a favor, please, and make some noise for one of the co-founders of Hospital Records, Mr. Christopher Goss. Can I, um, can I just say, can we please have some noise for all our family from the Ukraine? Santa Ukraine family are in the house tonight. Big up Santa Ukraine. Big up Ukraine. Big up Ukraine. Chris, thank you so much. You know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to drink Guinness for the rest of the evening. You don't have to do anything else apart from, of course, behave yourself in front of all these wonderful people. 
Thanks very much. <laughs> no, thank you, Chris, so much. I'm actually going to invite to the stage a very, very special guest and someone I want to talk to about some very, very serious things for a few minutes, if that's okay. So I don't know where he is. I can't see him. But if George Fleming from Save Our Scene UK. Wait, 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 wait. For George Fleming. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, Andy. So you finally, you Hello, finally, you finally have an actual. Very serious. It is very serious. Very serious. No, but you know, no smiling. Right? No smiling. No smiling. <laughs> so I don't know how many people out here have heard of Save Our Scene UK. If you have, fantastic. Um, you guys have started a movement, which is obviously the antithesis to the fact that um, the music industry is. I don't want to say this too loudly, but the music industry is absolutely fucked. Um, the live industry is absolutely fucked and people are struggling from not only events, but musicians, um, record labels. So I wanted to ask you right at the start, the first question is, what was the moment you felt like you needed to stand up and actually do something about the situation that we are experiencing right now in the music industry? Thanks, Andy. Uh, that moment, I was actually lying down uh, in my bed. It was about... <laughs> I Ooh. know, it's uh, <laughs> not what you think, sadly. But uh, no, it was, it was uh, beginning of May 2020. We had been in lockdown for about a month. I wasn't in the music industry. I was just a bit of a raver. And I literally bolted upright in the middle of the night, screamed at the top of my voice. It's really cringe. But I was like, what do you love? Because I've been asking myself that question for a while. I was an estate agent at the time. Boo. Uh, Don't uh, boo him. Don't let him get away with that. He's a good guy. <laughs> and then it just came to me. I was like, well, music. I love music. And then it dawned on me that the music industry was kind of being swept under the carpet. And then thought, save our scene. And I thought I was going to start throwing mud at the wall. And we got musicians to upload videos to their social media, share the giving link to help musicians, an amazing charity who are doing incredible things. And then they would nominate four others to do the same. And that's how it kind of got going, basically. Fantastic. And honestly, I mean, I've seen you guys campaign. You've done protests. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the people that work with you with Save Our Scene? Mm. Or is it more of a kind of like a solo project? Or how many people have you got kind of helping you out and working towards making a difference within well, the industry? I mean, SOS would not be here if it wasn't for just amazing people uh, helping out, basically. And I'm, I'm, I do it full time. I'm the only one who does it full time, but I've got some amazing guys on my team who, who are helping with the events and media and things like that. But yeah, there's not many of us, but it, kind of, it still feels like early days. You know, never really had a business plan going into it, but I feel like now we have, we're kind of, we've got a bit of a grip on what we actually want to do. Uh, but yeah, no, we've got some amazing people well, I mean what else do you want to know about them I mean I, I, mean, I could go into all sorts of details yeah. <laughs> we don't have to disclose that later we can uh, do that over a couple of pints yeah, after everyone's yeah, gone yeah. right okay so what is Save Our Scene currently in 2024 currently campaigning for right and sorry I've had to write these questions out because obviously everyone who's listened to the podcast know that I'm a very forgetful individual and so how is the live event slash live venue sector currently looking and where do you see it going right if things carry on in the way that we're currently experiencing it? Okay, well, I think I'll answer the second question first. Um, I mean, I'm sure lots of you will be aware, like last year, 2023, was one of the worst years on record for the live music industry. We lost 16% of our live music spaces, um, which, is, which is terrible. Um, you know, as you'll know, it's becoming, you know, every, the cost of everything's just becoming so much. Average rents went up by 38% last year for venues, operating costs through the roof, people aren't spending as much, um, and it really seems to be a, be a bit of a stronghold on our, on our culture. Uh, in the meantime, it was the best year on record for the commercial live uh, music industry, and um, this year, I mean, in, in previous years, we've done a lot campaigning for a VAT reduction for the hospitality and cultural sectors with NTIA, an amazing trade, trade body. And we've been doing a lot of that. Um, and it's just, it wasn't really hitting. It's not very sexy campaigning for VAT reduction. Uh, <laughs> and it's quite hard to engage. Sounds pretty hot to me, mate. Yeah, no, 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 no. It'll definitely get Chris going. He is. Uh, but look, I mean, this year, moving forward, what we, what we really want to do is, is like support Music Venues Trust. So they've got this amazing initiative where they're calling on this ticket levy to be voluntar voluntarily put in place, which would mean one pound on every ticket sold at arena and stadium level 
level would go in to support grassroots. A bit like with the Premier League, uh, France have it. Incredible stuff, man. And, uh, and thank you. Uh, and if something like this just feels actually doable, it's tangible. You know, a lot of these artists who are now selling out stadiums, they all came from the grassroots and it's time for a bit of soul searching, I think, uh, and holding people accountable. Because if we don't, uh, I'm sure the government will end up one day introducing a, a mandatory levy, which no one wants because, you know, what the fucking government are like. Sorry, mama language for those listening. Don't worry, Boris isn't um, here, man, he's fine. Uh, uh, I yeah. fucking hope he's not anyway. <laughs> um, so that, that's a big, big thing. And like, you know, we've done a lot of pop-up raves you may have seen, and that was kind of proving the point, like if we keep letting our venues close down, all you're doing is pushing the scene underground. But I think we've kind of made that point now. What we really want to do is just make sure everything we're doing is, is having a positive impact. And, and yeah, and big shout out to Hospital, because you guys are one of the few who actually really like, champion what we're doing. Real ones, real ones. Honestly, mate, and uh, you know, like, and, uh, obviously, we've exchanged some messages on Instagram when I first saw what you guys were doing. Um, and, and look, I have to be perfectly honest, I, I, I didn't realize the scope of how much you've affected the music industry already up until this point. And there's one interview that I watch from yourself where, honestly, George, I have to give you so much respect, man. You went on talk TV, which I don't know who knows, who knows about talk TV? <laughs> Yeah, right. No, no, not like in a good Tories. way. It's, it's not a fucking good thing. Like, you know, I'm not going to be politi like, political, but it's quite right wing, right? Yeah. And it's a very, very hostile, hostile place to go on. And they didn't pull any punches with you. How did it feel going up against people that quite clearly had no respect for the things that you were yeah. saying? And how did you manage to hold it down so well? Because that's what I'm m m most impressed by. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I hadn't really come across talk TV much. Or something before. So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was off my face. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, just like uh, joking. Uh, no, basically, well, I didn't really know. Anyway, you, you walk into this big shiny building and you suddenly realise you're in Rupert Murdoch land, and you're like, oh fuck, sorry again. Um, and it's, right, it's a hospital podcast. I swear, bro. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you got like Piers Morgan's face. Basically, all the cancelled presenters are in this building. So you got Piers Morgan, Jerry McCall, the Dean Norris, uh, all these characters. And and then you, and then it, it was fine in the end because you know went and got my hair and makeup done. I was like, oh yeah, looking great. Uh, and then you know walked in and they were just they weren't very nice to be honest. And I, I put I put the argument across. There's always things you kind of wish you had said, but. Uh, and then she wrapped it up saying, we've run out of, no, what'd she say? She said, well, it sounds like these venues just need to diversify what they're doing. And I'm like, and then, we've run out of time. And I'm like, oh, and I just shouted, save our say. <laughs> and then you've got to fight for your right to party. Come on. <laughs> and you know, it's a, it's a really interesting point that you made right at the end there, how you talk about how like, you know, the talk TV have said, you need to diversify, but don't allow you to kind of have the scope and the space to explain exactly or counteract exactly what that means. So for example, if they had given you the space and they've turned around to you and said, you need to diversify or clubs or venues need to diversify, what would you have said in response? Well, I, I think, you know, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, venue owners are doing everything they can to keep their spaces open. They're not just, you know, thinking, oh, the only way we can do this is by putting on nights. A lot of people do, um, you know, all sorts of interesting things to kind of keep people coming through the doors. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, it's just it, the way the way they just completely saw past the fact that there is no cap on things like rent increases and the fact that costs of everything gone up so much and they just put it they put it completely down to like a, the, you know, they said there must be a cultural shift going on or something like that. It's just like, no, there is a demand for this. We need it. Um, and actually, you know, I don't know, I could go on and on and on, but it's, uh, it's, it's not nice getting uh, put up against it, but I, I felt like I came out fighting and, you know. Honestly, mate, on. and like I, mess like I messaged you at the time, I, I, if you've not had a chance to watch that interview, I, I actually tried to find it. it. It's not that great. No, like no, but it really well. is. And actually, like, oh. do you know the funny thing is, I think Talk TV have taken it down because you bodied them, bro. <laughs> you bodied them. I think they've taken it down. And to, to speak so clearly 
eloquently with evidence about our scene and about everyone in this in this building in this in this pub um and about obviously the future of our music is is a really really great thing so honestly i want to give you massive massive props for that i think everyone in this building right now should give george massive props save our scene so i'll tell you what george We'll end on something a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Um, about you as an individual, and you mentioned earlier that you were an estate agent. I'm not going to press you too much. No, leave him alone. Nice one. No, That's a nice He's a nice guy. one. Yeah, he's only, he's only making 80% commission. It's cool. Um, so you as a person, George Fleming, what made you fall in love with electronic music? What made me fall? Well, it, you know what? I've got a bit of an interesting relationship with it. I never got into university. I was one of those people who got like no A levels and I kind of got shipped down to London and uh, just became an estate agent because that's what you do. And I found a mate of mine who I work with. Uh, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> you got shipped down. What well, about I'm like from Scotland, <laughs> as you can tell. Can you not tell? <laughs> I'm a, yeah, I'm like a plastic Scot. Fucking hell, posh Scot or something like that. I don't know. Uh, and yeah, I just, you know what, I discovered pingers for the first time and, uh, and then I just kind of fell in love and never looked back since. It's the truth, it's the truth. Whether I like to admit it or not, George, I think there's plenty of people in this room that have had a basically the same story. This dude just pointed at me, but like, it was me! It was fucking me! It was double dropping pink kangaroos all over the shop. Um, anyway, so. Last question I'm going to ask you, and obviously this kind of involves people in the rave. I love how we're doing like half serious, half just not whatsoever. Um, so from your perspective, George, considering all the work that you've done and, and um, the interviews that you've had and the work that you've been putting in behind the scenes, what can people like us, and I mean me and all these beautiful people here, do more to support the live dance music scene? Well, I feel like with you lot, I'm like preaching to the choir, basically, because you are all, you know, important people who, who love and, and cherish what, what we're in. But uh, I think, yeah, it's just supporting independent venues and, you know, I like <laughs> artists, you know, bringing through the next wave of talent. You know, I've got this big fear of like one day we're just going to live in this world where you've got, you know, big fat venues like drum sheds and not really much else underneath. And I, and I think that's really sad. And I also think culture's becoming really inaccessible for a lot of people. It's becoming so expensive and actually just a bit soulless. So I think, yeah, just keep that, keep that party going. Um, you know, don't just, don't be afraid to just, if you're young, I mean, you, you lot all, you know what you're doing. But I feel like if, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Bunch of old farts. No, I'm joking, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go now. <laughs> no, but I think the young now. I think the young. Are you trying to start a riot. Yeah, or something? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> no. I think the, I I worry about the, the the generation coming through now. I feel like a lot of them don't necessarily feel like they can take a step out their comfort zone and do something which is a little bit ballsy. And I really want to just, you know, we just need to encourage them to, to get out there and give things a go and they can follow their dreams because it is possible. We've just got to show these, these people who are trying to get a grip on our culture that we're not having it. So just quickly, I mean, sorry, I was going to, I said that would be the last question, but I'm just really interested by what you said there about kind of like the younger generation. I'm not saying that we're not Gen Z. <laughs> Because, I mean, look, half you motherfuckers got beards. You're not Gen Z. <laughs> I'm telling you that. So do you think that there is quite, like, a big difference between how potentially, especially since the lockdown and obviously people's attitudes have changed to raving, the cost of living crisis and so on and so forth, do you think that maybe the younger generation don't have the same kind of affinity towards live music that we do or what, what, what exactly do you mean by by the younger generation i, I think i think they do um but I, I think you know these big big spaces you know what what the young see are like you know they see lots of videos going around tiktok of drum sheds and that's where they think oh that's where the party's happening they might go out once a month instead of every weekend because they'd rather save up for that you know big show seeing a big artist at a venue like that um, and I, I think it's a, a lack of education about where is actually fun and cool to go rather than just, you know, going to these big fat venues which, which don't serve the rest of the culture very well, I don't think. And, you know, they look great on Instagram, right? I mean, we've, I mean I've been very lucky to play at drum sheds before and it's an, it's an amazing thing, an amazing experience. But I 
personally... Is anyone um, from Broadwick here? I'm sorry if... if so go on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I told you, you're going to start a riot, bro. No, like, I seriously. Uh, this is, it's like, I've only had half a pint as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm impressed, George. I like it. No, but seriously, you know, like, drum sheds, um, some of these bigger, like, more... Like, Iconic venue. Obviously, we miss print works. Um, but, you know, like when I used to go raving at, like, Soul in Motion, who knows about Soul in Motion, Wednesday, Thursday night? You know, and those nights were always places where you could not only discover new DJs, but, like, hear new music. And I'm not one of those... I'm not a boomer, by the way, just letting you know, yeah. But, you know, like, sometimes it kind of does feel that when you hear a lot of sets these days at these bigger festivals... There's a certain kind of roster of tunes that you hear every single time. I don't know if you guys agree with that or maybe I'm just being old and complaining. So how do you feel, George, that we can get back to maybe some of these more kind of, you know, like a midweek night, you go, you go to the pub, go to a Spoons, obviously, because I can't afford anything else. And you go to a Spoons and then you end up at flipping Soul in Motion and you hear it like, how can we get back to that? Or do you think that's completely a bygone era? I mean, that's a big question. I don't know whether I'm qualified enough to answer that, to be honest. Um, I, I think it's just putting on. What did someone say? What did you say? It's, it's on the venues. Yeah. It's on the venues. Yeah, it's on the venues to book the artists, book the nights. But I, I think you know, it's, it's just providing that, you know, providing that space, making sure you're putting on an interesting thing, you know, midweek. Um, I don't know. I think we've just got to show the young that there's more out there, um, and that's you know, that's something which we're trying to do. That's something which you guys do, and. You know, we'll be okay. There's still so much love for, for what we're doing. Uh, you know, it's um, the future. The future will be fine. I think we've just got to recognise when things are in trouble and we can get ourselves out of it. Great. And on that poignant note, party people of the 500th podcast, make some noise for George Fleming. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, George. Okay. I have another special guest, by the way. I don't know where she is. And by the way, Hospital Podcast, please feel free to buy this man a beer. He's only had half a pint. Let's make sure he can't even walk home by the end of the night. How about that? Yeah. 
chilling to my tunes, neighbors complaining again. You lot knocking at my doors, really fucking up my zen. I take one look at my phone, I got texts from my friend telling me about this rave. I'm like, oh, bro, where and when? Can I get in with balloons? He said, I know it depends. Called me back, I'm finding out, man, give me ten. Pack my stuff, get in my car, blasting tunes from start to end. Neighbors taking pics of me like I won't come and smash your lens. Point this middle finger at you like, what the fuck you do? You can call the feds, I'll slam my door like FU2. I'm like, what's the matter? It's a banger or a tune. Me apologize, you crazy loon, they thought this through. Must be off your trolley, I don't bow down to nobody. Must be off your trolley, I don't bow down to nobody. Must be off your trolley, I don't bow down to nobody. coming towards the last section of the podcast. I hope you are suitably sourced and you have plenty of tequila and beer. And I'll tell you what, right? It wouldn't be a special podcast without a very, very special guest. And over the last 18 months, this individual has been absolutely smashing it. And it was also a little bit worried about being on camera. So can we give a really, really fucking warm welcome to the incredible DJ Lens! Yes, yes, yes. I'll tell you what we'll do. To make it as easy as possible, we'll ask you a few questions and we'll play some of your tunes. And we're also going to play a new single of yours, which comes out on Friday. But firstly, can I ask you, how does it feel to be supporting the Brit Award winning Chase and Status on their world, I say worldwide tour, worldwide UK tour. How about that? Let's just give a big round of applause to Chase and Status right Woo! now. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's much explaining. I was just absolutely, like, gobsmacked about it. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, honestly, I was watching back some of your, your videos at um, Drum Sheds and also Cardiff Arena, and you had, like, the likes of Dread MC and Dynamite on the mic, and, of course, 
someone who is a part of your new single, which we'll talk about a little bit in a minute. How did that feel playing to a crowd of so many people? Because I've watched you rise over the last 18 months and you seem to handle everything like a fucking boss. Like, I don't understand how you can handle it. Like, so talk to us a little bit about how that feels for you. Um, well, on the day of drum sheds, I couldn't eat. I couldn't talk. I was sweating so much through every single thing I put on. Um, <laughs> It was Were not you okay. Having, like, outfit, it was not outfit okay. Madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as soon as I went on and the people came in, it was really weird because there were so many people. It didn't feel real. They all looked. Do like you know ants. how many people there were in in? Trump I think it was ten thousand. Yeah. I didn't even earn that last um, year. For and I think when it gets to that many people, you just kind of zone out and it doesn't feel real, so you don't get scared. So I? that, so it was kind of like, <laughs> in a way, being like in like a, a video game or something like that. It it's was like, so weird, honestly. Oh, fantastic. I just mate. couldn't really look up, to be honest. <laughs> so you're also a fresh off an amazing tour in Australia and New Zealand, partly with the incredible Hybrid Minds, supporting Hybrid Minds as well. And obviously you'd been to Australia and New Zealand. I won't tell you who you went there with, but his name is Dex. Um, and uh, it was a really great time, right? So tell us, what was it like this time, especially playing, you played a few headline shows this time, right? Yeah, so Australia with Hybrid Minds was wild because as you can imagine, their crowds were just so big and everyone was obsessed with them. So when I played Jungle before them, it didn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still amazing. We had the best time. They're the loveliest people. And then New Zealand on my own was just, yeah, it was weird. So it was, it was not like being with you. N well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing. Was it, was it, was it more fun with me and Josh? Well, I definitely got... Josh chefed for us, didn't he? he did. Quite a lot. And then you guys forced yeah, me to go to the gym. We've been shout out to Unglued, by the way. We're talking about Josh Unglued <laughs> in the face. One of the best chefs. So, yeah, tell, tell us a little bit more about that, actually. Well, I remember waking up every day severely hungover and then they'd force me to go to the gym and then eat a pile of chicken. Uh, so, yeah, that was quite hard work. But, you know, it was good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that was the hard work and not just, like, our presence or our banter or something like that. So... I wanted to ask you about, obviously, like the last 18 months has been absolutely incredible and the progress you've made has been inspiring. And if you guys don't know about DJ Lens, um, please get to know because she's going to do absolutely amazing things over the next few years. So as your friend, as your friend, I've obviously seen all these amazing things that have been happening to you. And to me, it seems crazy. How about for you? Have you had an opportunity to even take any of this in? Um, not really. I guess, like, <laughs> I, I, everyone that knows me, I don't really stop. And I think the thing that, like, really gets you is when you get lovely messages from, like, fans or artists, and then you really go, oh, yeah, that was really special. But otherwise, I don't really let myself think about it. <laughs> so do you think at some point you'll be able to actually think about it? Because it's, it looks like 2024 is another, almost another breakout year for you with all these festivals that you're, got, you're going on. Obviously, we've got new releases and we're going to talk about your next single, which is coming out on Friday. We're going to play that as an ex not an exclusive first play. I think it might be. Is it an exclusive first play? You've given... Hey, listen, we make some noise for Lens just for that. Just for that. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a few questions just before we play this new tune. Um, and the first, win, the first one is, who is your dream back-to-back? -back? Dillinger. <laughs> okay. Easy. <laughs> Favourite gig of your career so far? Um, Favourite gig... Boomtown 2023. Wrong side of the tracks. 100%. Just everything came together that day. Boomtown's a very perfect. wonky... It's the best place on earth. It is the best place on earth. <laughs> I don't know if anyone remembers what happens when they go no, to Boomtown. No, that's the best part. Is it? Yeah. I can't even remember where I played last year. Um, so, musically, what is your musical guilty pleasure? And if it's Justin Bieber, it's cool. It's Rihanna. Cool. Rihanna, that's not guilty. Is it? No, not at all. Well, Don't I used to us. love JLS. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not sorry. All right, that was a bit of a curveball that I was not expecting whatsoever. 
Um, <laughs> 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 fucking JLS. I had a, you know, you know when they had those like dolls that came out. I had an, oh I had an Aston doll. <laughs> okay, so moving on to a favorite country that you've played in so far. Oh, uh, I don't think I could say a favorite, but I'd say like maybe a combination of obviously New Zealand. It's just ridiculous because they're just they are obsessed with drum and bass. Um, I think the Netherlands are pretty good. They're I love I right? love going there because they they just have it. Um, and Budapest, Hungary, is always a big shout, man. Is always is it a highlight. Blade, it's not Blade Runners out there you yeah, play for. Yeah, Blade it's Blade Runners. Runners. Yeah, yeah. Big shout out to I Blade, love Runners, Blade as well, Runners as well, man. Crew. Okay, so we're gonna do some uh, real quick fire questions. Pizza or Chinese? Chinese. Chinese, okay. Now, this is a question from Harry Hoax, who lives in Devon. So, this is the reason why this question is on my list. Jam or cream first on your scones? <laughs> hey, you have to answer it, cuz. <laughs> I'd say jam. Yeah. yeah. Are we. Are we. Are we happy with that? So do you not use the cream as like the butter? Hang on, hang on, hang on a sec. Chris Goss, come here one second. Can you, just, can you just explain why you're unhappy? Well, the thing is that you have to put cream down as the obvious layer to support the jam. Right? How many afternoon Spent teas have you had? Spent a long time had? studying that, actually. But <laughs> there will be no boxing match tonight. Okay, so uh, Xbox or PlayStation? Play, PlayStation. PlayStation, oh... Tequila or vodka? Tequila. Tequila, tequila. Always. Hey, listen, this might trigger a lot of flipping people right now, I'll tell you that. Arsenal or Tottenham? Arsenal! Arsenal! <laughs> Who, uh, by the way, 4-0 up when I last checked. 4-0 up when I last checked. <laughs> Bro, why... Why is Chris getting triggered? He, he supports West Ham. You're a, you're a Newcastle fan. I'm a fan. You're a Newcastle. How dare you even ask that? Scrub that. We're going to edit that. George, Chima, we'll edit that out. It's not even a question. The co-founder of Hospital Records has spoken. <laughs> has spoken. Okay, so would you rather... Yeah, Arsenal were 5-0 up at the moment. The Arsenal. No, but let's not sing this right now. <laughs> would you rather would you rather want, would you rather fight one horse sized duck or a hundred duck sized horses? I'm not gonna lie, I hate things that flap. <laughs> so I, that really scares me. So maybe a hundred horse sized ducks, yeah. I've got to admit there is No I've duck sized horse, wait, I'm confused. No, like, look. The thing that isn't a duck. One horse-sized duck or one hundred ducks. Yeah. I have never ever had anyone <laughs> in my thirty-five years on this planet say I don't like anything that flaps. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> Would you rather have fingers for toes or toes for fingers? Uh, fingers for toes. Fingers yeah. for toes. Straight up. Straight up. All right then. So two more questions to go. Right. Jungle, jump up, dance floor. One has to go. Which is it? Say that again, jungle. Jungle, jump up, dance floor. One has to go. Dance floor. Dance floor goes. Yeah. Bye Ooh, bye. Bye bye, dance floor. <laughs> and the last question before we make some incredible noise for this amazing DJ and producer. Life Through the Lens, the brand new feature film by Quentin Carantino, is in production. The casting team have boiled the character that plays you down to two choices. Samuel L. Jackson or Danny DeVito. Which one would you pick? I've got to go Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel! But honestly, Ellen... You've had an amazing 18 months. It has been incredible watching your rise. And I think everyone in the building who especially knows about what you've been doing, I know how hard you work behind the scenes. Um, and whenever anyone has the success that you've had is not for any other reason, but through hard work and innovation. And honestly, I'm very, very impressed with how the last 18 months has gone for you. So 
so just expanding on that a little bit, I know this question wasn't in our pre-approved question list. <laughs> but, you know, i got to fuck shit up somehow, right? No, but on a serious note, it's actually a really easy question. 2024, I know we're kind of three months into it already. What are your plans for 2024? What can we expect from Lens, either musically or live? You don't know? Um, we can ask someone else if you want. <laughs> maybe Album? six deck mixing. Ooh. Maybe I'll give that a go. <laughs> I mean, I'm down for that. So, last question I'll ask you. You have a brand new piece of music which comes out on Friday, which also happens to be International Women's Day, right? Oy, oy. Which is really, really exciting. So it's called After Party, and it's with a gentleman called LZ. Do you want to tell people how this tune came about before we play it? I'd love to give you a really amazing story, but there's not one at all. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just sent the guy the tune, and he fucking smashed it. Um, and we were just like, it was the easiest thing ever. And we, and we were just like, yeah, let's do it. Um, and he was perfect for the instrumental, and yeah. We just went with it, and that is it. So, <laughs> should we play the world exclusive first play of Lens? Honestly, mate, and you know, I'm a good friend of yours, and, and I know we're doing this podcast and all the rest of it, but genuinely, I am so fucking proud of you, man. Like, you are, you have done absolutely amazing. And, uh, you not only are you an amazing DJ, you're an amazing selector, producer, you understand music, you understand all genres and eras of drum and bass. So one more time, party people for the hospital pub, pub, pub podcast. I'm getting a bit confused now, right? Just do me a favor and make some loud, loud noise for the one, the only, TJ Lenz. So, unfortunately, we've come to the end of the 500th Hospital Pubcast. So, can I just ask you guys, have you had a good time this evening or what? You had a good time? And we're not done yet. So, we have a pub quiz, which is happening next. And I'm expecting, I'm expecting some very good answers. But before we do that, does anyone want to hear DJ Lens perform some flipping triple drops for about 10 minutes? You down? All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, um, so take that out. Yeah, we're going to go right this minute. Until then. Yeah, take my, take, take my headphones out. Let me just ask the crowd. Um, what is your favorite ever Hospital Records release? I want to hear some, some names here. Together. Hold on. No tomorrow. 
Tides, new tone of Lily, right? You're really testing my knowledge right now, guys. <laughs> I've kind of put myself on the spot here a little bit. Okay, instead of listening to my terrible trivia about hospital records, for the end of the podcast, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this incredible DJ to play some tunes for you for the next 10 minutes. One more time, from the front to the back, to the left, to the right. Do me a favor and make some noise for DJ Ray.
Brand, brand, brand new piece of music from Lens. This is going to be the last tune that we play before we have an amazing pub quiz. We've already turned this into a rave and I hope the Cambria, can we just make some noise for the Cambria who have let us be a bunch of reprobates? It's your local, right? Local. Wow. All right, this track is Charlotte Plank Rage and this is the Lens remix. Once again, this is a world exclusive. I have no idea when it's coming out, but it's on... Hey, it's on, it's on my USB, that's all that matters.
It's Monday night in a pub. This is great, isn't it? Can we have some noise for DJ Lens? people that is the end of the 500th hospital podcast